Hey, hey, hey. Alright y'all, it just got announced a couple of days ago that Devin Vassell and the San Antonio Spurs have agreed to a new contract extension. It will start kicking in after this season, so next season, not this season, next season. And it will be a 5 year, $146 million extension, uh, rounds out to about $29.2 million per year. And just right off the bat, this is a really good deal for both sides. You know, Devin Vassell hasn't exactly shown that he is a max contract type of guy, but he has shown enough that the Spurs want to keep him around. They're willing to pay him a good amount of money to do so. And, uh, you know, with the new CBA deals coming in in the next season or two, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how cost-effective this contract looks in, you know, two, three years from now. Anyway, the 11th overall pick from the 2020 draft He's been pretty under the radar for the first three years of his career so far, uh, mostly due to the fact that he's been out in San Antonio, small market, a lot of NBA fans probably just aren't keeping tabs on him, hence the title of the video. So if you are someone who's saying to yourself, you know, I don't really know that much about Dem Vassell, you're in the right spot. I'm here to let you in on all the key details and everything you need to know. Now Vassell was having a nice little third year leap this past season, uh, but he was dealing with a lot of injuries. He only ended up playing... 38 games, but if you look at his numbers from year two to year three, he saw a nice bump in points per game, assists per game, his three-point shooting went up, he was taking more threes, uh, more noticeably his catch and shoot and pull up three numbers rose a bit better than just his three-point shooting in general, so those are some nice boosts to see. Plus, another little fun fact, Devin Vassell shot 46% on 4.2 mid-range jumpers per game this past season. And if you throw some filters on that stat, there were 12 players in the entire NBA that took 4 or more mid-range jumpers per game, and Vassell ranked 9th amongst these 12 players in mid-range field goal percentage, which might not seem that good off the bat, but throw in some context and add in the fact that Vassell and Cade Cunningham were the only two players under 25 to make this list. So, you know, it's those two guys on a list with a bunch of seasoned veterans who have learned how to score the ball after countless seasons in the NBA, and I think that provides some, you know, better context and, again, makes this stat more impressive than it might seem at first. Plus, at the end of the day, 46% from the mid-range, just isolated by itself, is a very good number. So at this point in his career, Dem Vassell is a pretty solid two-way player. He can go and get you buckets and handle the ball on the offensive end, while also playing some plus defense on the other side of the basketball court. One thing that impressed me is he had the ball in his hands a lot, at least in the games that I watched, and even though he played a lot of two and the three, and was running with a lot of lamps that had Trey Jones or other guards on the court, he still handled a lot of the possessions as the main ball handler, and he'd run a lot of pick and rolls with Zach Collins, Jeremy Sohan, uh, Jakob Pertl when he was still there, stuff like that. And while the playmaking isn't quite where it should be, although we'll get to that more later, his ability to come off the screen and hit pull-up shots in the mid-range you know, against like a drop defense or just pull up even when the big comes out and plays the level, he can add a little step back to his mid-range game. He'll pull up from threes if he's really feeling himself, but for the most part, he likes to take these pull-up middies, pull-up threes off of screens, and it's an effective way for him to get buckets. And quick side note, his step backs don't always look pretty, he's no James Harden, but with his high release point, it's really tough to block his shots in general, so even him just adding a little sidestep or step back makes it that much more difficult for the defenders to get to his shot and block it, even if he has a 7 foot center contesting the shot. Now when Vassell is on offense and he doesn't have the ball in his hands, it was nice to see that the Spurs would still utilize him, giving him handoffs, having him come off of you know, off-ball screens, and just run other plays for him to get him involved because another thing I noticed is that he's very good at moving off the ball, he'll cut back door, he'll just make good cuts to get other teammates open or get himself more open, and he's very active off the ball. And again, when he has it going, he can hit movement threes off the catch, off the dribble, it, he can get pretty lights out when he has it going. Now when it comes to driving to the rim and getting rim pressure, this is another area where I'd like to see just a little bit of improvement. He's got a pretty solid bag of moves that helps him get to the rim, whether it's just a nice ball handling move to get by his defender, or he's got some nice uh, decelerating finishes to help get the shot off over defenders once he's at the rim. But for the most part, he doesn't really try and finish through traffic. Uh, I don't know if it's a strength thing. I don't know if it's just, you know, he, that he doesn't like those kinds of shots. I can't get in his head. 
But something positive that he does when he drives into a congested paint is that he's good at kicking out. He's not just going to force up some tough shot. He's willing to kick out and get an assist or you know just move the ball in general. And again, it helps lead to better looks. Again, in today's NBA, the best shot you can get is a three-pointer on a pass from the paint. And that's something that Devin Vassell has shown he has the capability of doing. Now, the main thing I'd like to see Vassell improve on his drives, again, tying into that whole congested paint thing, is I'd just like to see him try to get to the free throw line more. He's not the best free throw shooter, so I can understand why he might hesitate to look for contact. But with how good of a shooter he is, I feel like working on his free throws, improving his free throws, it shouldn't be that difficult. And again, just getting to the free throw line is just the easiest way to get points in the league. Now building off his ability to drive and kick, his playmaking in general is at a pretty good spot. Again, he's only in year three, he came into the league pretty much as a scorer of the basketball, so it was kind of understood that the playmaking would have to be grown as he grows in the NBA, and again, he's at a good spot. He averaged over three assists per game this past season, and most of these assists were nice you know, pocket passes out of the pick and roll. He had some nice skip passes or you know, some hockey assists where he would swing the ball and that would then lead to someone else getting open on the next pass. For the most part, he seems to understand that with his scoring gravity, when he gets going, that the defense has more eyes on him, meaning that his teammates are going to be more open and he can create more passing lanes that can lead to, again, his teammates getting easier shots. Overall, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he ends up being a 5-6 assist per game kind of guy down the line, maybe in a year or two, but for now, he's still building on that kind of stuff. He's just going to need reps. I think it'll happen eventually. Now, perhaps the part of Vassell's game that impressed me the most was his defense. He's got the long wingspan, he's got the long legs, and he's got some quickness to him. He's good at maneuvering around screens, which overall, all those things together, makes him a really nice point of attack defender. And it's a big reason why I like watching him at the 2 more than at the 3, because when he's guarding other wings, a lot of times he just sits in the corner and isn't used defensively as much, because he's just not that good at being like a weak side help kind of guy. I think he works a lot better at being the guy at the top of the key, playing defense on opposing team's guards and point guards, because again, he has a long wingspan. He uses that wingspan to get in the passing lanes, tipping passes, just cooking guys, which are all great things that actually help the defense. He also had some pretty ridiculous blocks in the couple of games that I watched, which uh, is just something that I didn't really expect out of him, but uh, I, you know, maybe he does have a little bit of room protection at the end of the day. Uh, again, the long wingspan certainly helps on that. If this is something that he can continue to grow to the point that he could be used as like a secondary rim protector. That's just going to make the San Antonio defense even better down the line. So as we head into this next season, I do find it interesting because Kelvin Johnson and Devin Vassell have been the two best players on this team for the past you know, year or two or so. At least they're the two foundational pieces. Obviously, Victor Wembanyama is going to come in and also be probably the centerpiece for this team moving forward. But when it comes to Johnson and Vassell, I... I draw some comparisons to a duo like Tatum and Brown in Boston because you had Jalen Brown who was one year older than Jason Tatum and although they started their careers with Jalen Brown being the better player, Tatum eventually surpassed them just because Tatum has a higher ceiling than Jalen Brown at the end of the day and I think a very similar thing could be happening here. Because so far Kellen Johnson has been the better player in recent years although he is a year older so he has that extra year of expertise on Devin Vassell whereas I think Vassell is primed for a year four leap, especially if he stays healthy, and at the end of the day, I just think he has such a higher ceiling than Keldon Johnson that I think Vassell will end up being the guy, at least while Victor Wembanyama is still learning and developing and growing, and then you know, obviously he'll take the reins at some point because he's an alien. But again, the point I'm trying to get at is I think Devin Vassell has the clear path to, at least for this next season, being the most important player on this team, you know, obviously as Wemby learns the league. He's already been a really good player through three years, and he's shown plenty of flashes that he has plenty of developing still to go as he matures and starts to hit his actual prime, which he has plenty of time to get to. And as great as Wemby is, San Antonio is going to need someone to handle the ball at the end of games and take those big shots, and I think Devin Vassell is going to end up being that guy. Now when it comes to next season, I still don't think the Spurs are going to be that great. I doubt they even sniffed the playing games, even though 
they will probably be a really exciting team to watch because they prove that they can hang with a lot of teams last season. Now they add a lot of talent this offseason, and they should win more games, but again, they're not going to come anywhere close to the playoffs or the play-in. At the very least, Wemby should come in and solidify their defense, and once you have him, Jeremy Sohan, Zach Collins, Devin Vassell, that should be a pretty elite core to build around. Then you throw in good scores like Kelvin Johnson, a stabilizer like Trey Jones, and you know, down the line, two, three, four years from now, if they are able to make a big splash free agency or a big trade, this Spurs team could end up being really dangerous. But right here, right now, I think this is going to be Devin Vassell's team, at least for this next season, and I, I'm really banking on him taking a year four leap because it just, he seems like he's ready for it. But that's enough from me talking about the Spurs and Devin Vassell. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one.